day seven. Welcome back, it's day seven. Hope you're enjoying this series. What we're talking about, Andrew, is going to be talking about today is that your history, understand me now, your history does not determine your destiny. What happened yesterday doesn't have to affect today or your future. Watch this, this is going to be powerful. Remember, it's only three, four minutes, but hope that you're implementing these things that you're learning. Uh, and the title of uh, chapter seven is, History Does Not Determine Your Destiny. Mm. And obviously we leave with the quote, it says, the past can have a profound impact on our present and the future if, and I love this, if we grant it permission Absolutely. to do so. Yeah. So let's elaborate um, on that. Yeah. So where did you come with this? Well, uh, this is one of the big passions of my life. Yeah. So when I ever preach on this, I get very emotional. Yeah. Because when I was 10 years old, um, I was in primary school. Yeah. Uh, I was a, a, you know, a decent student, but I was struggling with my work at that time. Yeah. And the teacher, uh, maybe out of frustration, yeah. instead of trying to help me, made life worse. And I remember him dragging me up to the front of the class yeah. in a sort of a, a searing moment that I'd oh never God. forgotten. Yeah. And he said, uh, essentially, you're a stupid boy. You'll never amount to anything. You're a waste of space. And, wow. and lambasted me for essentially a couple of minutes. Yeah. That indelibly sort of marked me. Yeah. And I remember going to secondary school and because of that, I, I sort of ended up in a lower stream in, in the secondary school. So yeah. it was a grammar stream and a lower stream. Yeah. And I ended up in the lower stream. And yet it was an impact with the headmaster of that school that transformed my life. Yeah. And uh, through his encouragement, I went from the lower stream to the top stream in one year. Fantastic. And here's what he said to me. He yeah. said, you have amazing potential yeah you have great intelligence and great skill when I got my PhD yeah. all those years later I wrote to him yeah he had retired and he wrote me back a four-page letter thanking me for thanking him wow. for spotting that now here was the thing I say to people if I'd have allowed the words of the teacher yeah you're a stupid boy you'll never amount to anything to form the limit of my life yeah. then I would have been a stupid boy yeah I would have been a stupid man and I wouldn't have achieved half the things that I've now achieved in life. What broke that was the belief that uh, my past, what someone said about me, yeah. wasn't the parameters of my future. Fantastic. So somebody else saw something yeah. in me yeah. which lifted the possibility beyond that parameter. I meet a lot of people who are giving yesterday permission to dictate to tomorrow. And the future, yeah. So, so, and they do that by living as a slave to yesterday. Yeah. So today becomes hijacked. Yeah. By the pain, the disappointment, the sorrow, sometimes horrific events of yesterday. Yeah. Um, but they allow that to become the prison house of today. And once we let that happen, tomorrow is finished. We have no tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow will never be beyond today. It's going to be the same type of day tomorrow yeah. as it is today. Because one of the things I love that you say as well in, in this chapter is refuse to, to play the blame culture. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, so what you were saying is that you could have easily blamed your future on this teacher. Yeah. But what you were saying is that I refuse. I refuse to do it. I'm taking control of my Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Um, so what you're saying to people is that, look, whatever's happened in your past, you take control. Yeah. Because I suppose, are you saying if you don't take control, you're letting history dictate your life? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and not only that, the double whammy is yeah. you end up getting hurt twice. So yeah. someone hurts you, say for example, this teacher, and I end up then missing the best of my life because yeah. of him. Yeah. Then I'm doubly worse off. I'm, I'm yeah. now, not only is it his fault, yeah. but I've missed a great life. Yeah. And, and, and he carries on with his life. Yeah. He's probably having a great life. He's probably forgotten all about <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. And here I am. Living, living up an impoverished life yeah. and blaming him for it and he probably doesn't even know. Even so, so release yourself yeah. from blame yeah. and take responsibility. There's a great example of this in the Bible, Jabez, yeah. who's, who's, his name literally means pain. Yeah. It says his mother gave him that name because yeah. of the pain she caused him. Now he could have turned around and said, oh well, my, my mom didn't love me. My mom hated me. Yeah. Look at the name she gave me. And he could have lived a mediocre life. But it says he called out to God and he said, God, enlarge me. Yeah. Expand my territory. 
And the Bible says that God not only honored his request, but God said he was more honorable. He stood up and out from among his brothers. So this horrific beginning, yeah. which predicts nothing but mediocrity. Yeah. And what do we end up with? A man who stands head and shoulders above his brothers. A man who actually expands his territory yeah. instead of living in a narrow place. And I think-